all. Yes. Certainly, certainly. All right, open your Bibles this morning to John, John chapter 10. <clears throat> John chapter 10. This is a kind of one of those unique passages that <clears throat> is only, only mentioned in one particular gospel. So it, it may be alluded to in other passages of Scripture, but uh, this is something that, that really is is uh, unique to the book of John, you could say. But as we look at this this morning, uh, thinking about Jesus and thinking about everything that we've seen over the past few weeks and how we've seen this transition of his ministry. He's gone from, you know, people questioning who he is, what he is, why he's there, and, and now he's starting to explain who he is. He's starting to uh, reveal himself to his disciples as we saw in the Transfiguration and telling them, I'm going to die. You know, I'm going to lay down my life, and you need to prepare for that. And everything that's going on in the whole ministry, it seems like things are being turned around and turned upside down, and, and things are changing. And now Jesus goes into uh, this discourse here in, in John chapter 10, and he begins to use this parable to teach his followers a, a lesson on the good shepherd. And if, if you know anything about the book of John, you know chapter 10 is all about the good shepherd and, and how we know that Jesus is the good shepherd. We know that he's talking about himself and this is what he's teaching the disciples. As usual, they don't get it. It kind of reminds me of that. <laughs> yeah, it kind of reminds me of that old saying, you can't see the forest for the trees. You know, they're too close to the situation. They, they, they can't grasp that he's really talking about himself. And so he goes through this, this situation, and, and we see this where many times in Scripture, believers are referred to as sheep. Why is that? <laughs> you know, I, I remember as a young Christian, I would read things like that, and I would think, sheep? Why, why would he call us sheep? Why, why, why this analogy? Why this, you know, sheep, shepherd? What, it, it doesn't make sense. Well, you know, sheep have a very unique relationship with the shepherd. And it's probably unique in the, in the world of livestock and, and, you know, agriculture that, you know, you don't have this kind of a relationship with a cow. Or, or pigs, you know, there's a very unique relationship between the shepherd and the sheep. You know, the, the sheep actually uh, trust their shepherd and, and follow wherever he goes. In fact, it, it's pretty common that the sheep will either, either watch or listen for the shepherd every moment of the day because without that shepherd, they get off into trouble. Without that shepherd, they're easily led astray. And so they have to be mindful of the shepherd's location. They're always watching, always listening for those commands or watching for his movements because in reality, those sheep, they see that shepherd, he's always out in front of them, and if he goes left, they go left. If he goes right, they go right because they know to follow that shepherd. They don't follow another shepherd, we're going to get into this today, but they follow their shepherd, their specific shepherd. And this is an amazing relationship that we don't see anywhere else. You think, well, you know, dogs are pretty faithful and dogs will follow their, their owners and... Oh, let me tell you something. <laughs> now, our dog, I mean, she, she's broken. She's, she's the happiest thing in the world when we come home. She's so excited to see us, and, and there's no doubt she loves us, and there's no doubt that she belongs to that family, and she's just as weird as we are. But I'm telling you, the pizza delivery driver came, and she ran out and jumped in his truck, <laughs> ready to go for a ride. You know, it's a different relationship. They know you'll provide. They know you're going to feed them. They know you're going to take care of them. 
But, you know, and yes, there's loyalty there. Obviously, there's loyalty there. And, you know, you want a, an animal in your home that's going to protect you, things of that nature. But, yeah, she'll go off with anybody. She doesn't care. Sheep don't do that. These sheep know their shepherd, and they know that specific shepherd. They know his voice. They know his commands, and they will not listen to another. It's, a, it's just a, no other word to say it, but it's a unique relationship. And that's why the Bible uses that. That's why Jesus uses this parable to teach the disciples about his relationship to them and theirs to him. Because we know he is the good shepherd. So what is it that he uses in this passage to teach this lesson? And that's what we're going to look at today. We're looking at this good shepherd. But first of all, we see the shepherd, he guides the sheep. We've already talked about that a little bit. He guides the sheep. Look at verse 1. Notice this first. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door under the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. Now, notice here in verse 1 that Jesus points out that there is only one way into the fold. You know, this is important. And the reason that Jesus is starting this way is because he's teaching who he is. And he's saying to his disciples, he's saying to all of his followers there, that when you think about the relationship between the shepherd and these sheep, that you're not getting into this sheepfold. You're not going to become a member of this flock unless you come through the door, unless you come through the proper way. You can't climb over the wall. You can't disguise yourself and sneak in because there's only one way into this fold. This is important that we understand this because in, in today's society and even in Christian circles, they want to say, well, you know, there are many paths to heaven. And I, I've heard this said a, a thousand times and, and whenever I hear it, it just, I just want to scream. <laughs> For lack of a better word, I was like, no, there's one way. There's not, there's not many paths to God. There's not many ways to heaven. There's one way in, and you're not coming if you don't come that way. And this is what Jesus is teaching. I remember years ago, I heard a, a, an interview with Joel Olstein, and it's probably been told a million times, but Joel Olstein was on a television program. He was, I think it was Oprah. And, and he, he's being interviewed by Oprah, and she says, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven? And he said, well, I believe there are many, many paths to God. And this is a nationwide pastor, and I use that term loosely. I mean, if you're pastoring people and you do not believe that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven, then you're, you're not a true pastor. And it just, it floored me to hear that. And it's, it's discouraging also because he's very well known and people will follow and hang on his every word. Very wealthy. Oh, yes. Not that pastors can't be wealthy, but he's fleecing the flock. And that's what's taking place. And so, you know, we've got to be careful. We've got to be mindful of that. You know, understand that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. And if somebody's teaching any other way, they're a false prophet. They're a false shepherd. And we don't need to be following them. That, that's, why, that's why Jesus makes this point. You're not getting into the flock some other way. So if they're teaching there's another way in, don't listen to them. Don't follow them. So it's important that he starts this way. And then he goes on in verse 2. He says, but he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. So he's telling them here, I guide them. The shepherd guides them. So the sheep will, will watch the shepherd, they'll watch his moves, they'll, 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 they'll watch where he stands because they understand that, that this shepherd wants what is best for them. This shepherd is going to be there to guide them on the right path and, and going to make sure that there's nothing in the way that's going to cause them to stumble because that's the job of the shepherd. 
If he sees something in the road that they need to avoid, then he'll walk around it and they'll follow him. It's an amazing relationship. It's, it's almost as if they share the same mind. Imagine that. What do you think he's trying to picture here? What do you think he's trying to get us to understand? But he's saying the shepherd will lead them out and they'll follow him wherever he goes. And think about what, what David wrote in Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He leadeth me in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. Why still waters? Well, because sheep are also very skittish creatures. And the slightest bit of movement will scare them. And what happens when they get scared? They lose sight of the shepherd and they just take off running. And then they end up in trouble. They end up hurting themselves. They end up where they shouldn't be because they've lost sight of that shepherd. So sheep have to be led to very still water because if that water starts to stir, it'll scare them. That's why it's important that the shepherd knows to lead them to still water. Isn't this amazing? You think about our relationship to Jesus Christ, our good shepherd. You know, when, when things get a little bumpy, when things get a little rocky in our lives and, and difficulties come and trials come, what's our first thought? Oh, I got, I got to go fix this. I got to... Calm down. Watch the shepherd. Where's he going? He will lead you through this trial. He will lead you where you need to be. Follow the shepherd. Don't worry about that trial. Don't worry about that difficulty. Don't worry about that bump in the road because He's going to lead you around it. He's going to guide you. And really, as we look at this and we think about His disciples and how, how He's led them up to this point, and they should be understanding this. They should very easily understand this parable and see this analogy and say, oh, He's talking about Himself. But they just don't get it. He's saying, you know, the sheep trust the shepherd and know that he will only guide them to safety. He will only guide them where he knows they need to be. And he will only guide them to what is best for them. The beautiful green pastures, the still water, the calmness of trusting the shepherd. That's the picture he's trying to give us. Because as sheep, even the Bible says, as sheep, we've all gone astray, <laughs> haven't we? because we lost sight of the shepherd. So what else does he teach us here? He teaches that, that he guides the sheep, and then he also teaches that he gives for the sheep. Look what he says here, uh, beginning in, in, in verse, lost my place, verse 6. <clears throat> Am I in the right spot? Yeah, okay, sorry. Verse 6. And the parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. So again, they didn't understand it. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. So he's trying to teach them here that, you know, that they're going to follow the shepherd regardless of what's going on. They're going to keep their eyes on the shepherd. And as the shepherd moves, they move. They're not going to follow some false teacher. They're not going to follow uh, 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 someone they don't know or they don't understand. But as they as they see the shepherd and they're, they're being taught this parable, the disciples say, what is he talking about? What does this have to do with us? This doesn't make any sense. And so Jesus finally stops and he says, listen, I'm the door. Are you getting it now? You understand I'm the way in. Now remember, we talked about how his, his ministry is transitioning now, and he's beginning to teach them about what's coming, what's around the corner, so he wants them to understand, you need to drop everything and follow me. I'm the way. I'm the one that you trust. In fact, in John 14, 6, what does he say? I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man, I don't care who you are, Priest, prophet, or king, doesn't matter. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. 
I'm the door, folks. Are you getting this? Isn't it amazing that he has to kind of get the disciples and say, listen to what I'm saying. I'm the shepherd. I'm the door. I'm the way in. You're not getting into this fold unless you come by me. This is an amazing truth. And Jesus is trying to get his disciples to understand this because in the days that follow, they're going to need this truth. How, how many times since you've been saved have you thought, man, I hope I did the right thing? I mean, is, it, is this really? I mean, this guy down the road, he's teaching something different. You know, he's teaching you've got to be baptized to get into heaven. Well, this guy over here, he's teaching that you've got to live a good life to get into heaven. Wow, wow, man, am I really doing the right thing? The disciples are in just a few days away from questioning everything that Jesus has taught them. So he's got to get them alone and he's got to say, listen, I'm the way. There's no other way to the Father. You can only come to God by me. And it's important that we understand that, and it's important that we teach that. Now, it's real easy sometimes to get caught up into the whole, you know, uh, what would you call them, traditions? You know, I understand baptism does not save. It has nothing to do with you going to heaven. You know, and I could give you the example of the thief on the cross all day, all day long, but the truth of the matter is, baptism is a step of obedience, It's not required for heaven, it's required for fellowship. It's required for a a good relationship because you're saying, I'm willing to obey and do what you tell me to do. That's simply what that is. It's just an example. It's a testimony to others that you believe in the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And that is what you're putting your faith in. Not the water, not the baptism, not the church, not church membership. Only Jesus Christ. And so he's making it a point to say, listen, you're missing, the, you're missing what I'm saying here. I'm the door. I'm the one you need to look to. I'm the way in. You see this? Now look at verse 8. Verse 8, he says, And uh, all that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. He says it again. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Now, wait a minute. What did David say in Psalms about the the Lord being his shepherd? He leadeth him to green pastures. He leadeth him beside still waters. He gives me everything I need because with the shepherd, I shall not want. You see this? And so Jesus is saying, I'm the door. I'm the way into the fold. And if you come by me, then you can go in and out and enjoy the pasture. You can have everything that you need to sustain your life, physically, spiritually, mentally, everything that you need is by me. You see this? He's saying this is a benefit of being the sheep when you keep your eyes on the shepherd, when you focus on the shepherd, when you listen for the shepherd. You listen for the commands, you watch for the moves, and you make sure that you're only going where the shepherd leads, and you're only doing what the shepherd says, and you're only following the shepherd. He says, there have been others that have come before me, but the sheep didn't follow them because they didn't know their voice. They didn't know them. They were thieves. They were robbers. They were false teachers. They believe there's many ways into the fold. You see what he's saying here? He's he's telling them, you can't come into this fold unless you come by me. And and I think in today's society, this is something that that we really need to focus on because there's so much out there. And, and, you know, I I, I think years ago, like when I was growing up, you know, it was always, well, where do you go to church? What do they believe? And you, you you had to search, you had to study, you had to try to figure things out. Now with the internet and, you know, everybody's got computers in their hands and, you know, everybody's live streaming and, and, I mean, there are churches everywhere that are spreading their version of the truth. 
And we need to make sure that what we're listening to lines up with what the shepherd teaches. Because if it doesn't line up with Scripture, then it's not from the shepherd. Does that make sense? Because we know these are his commands. And if what we're hearing on the television, on the internet, on our phones, whatever it is, if it doesn't line up with what the Bible says, then that's not the true shepherd. Period. And that's not a particular shepherd we need to listen to. So that's what Jesus is saying. Be careful. Be mindful. I'm the way. Verse 10. Notice this. He says, The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. Now, you think about that, that verse. You know, we, we fight these, these thieves, if you will, these thieves and robbers every day. Because the devil wants to come in and destroy everything that we have in Christ. He wants to, he wants to get us distracted. He wants to get us sidetracked. He wants us to, to take our focus off the shepherd so that he's not leading us. The world wants to throw everything out there and say, Oh, you've got to have this. Oh, this is the best. Oh, you need to come here. and Oh, this is wonderful. And We're distracted all the time. And what happens to a sheep when it gets distracted? When that sheep gets distracted, he loses sight of the shepherd. And if the shepherd gets out of earshot, the sheep can no longer hear the shepherd. And so the sheep ends up in trouble. So we need to understand that the, the shepherd is there to, to give for the sheep. He says here, I, I'm, I've come so that you can focus on me, and I come to give you life. But not just... A living, not we think about how Jesus says, I have come to give you life more abundantly. That word abundantly is the, the Greek word, if I can pronounce this, parasos. And it means excessive or superior. And we need to think about that. Everything that the world has to offer and everything that the devil has to offer is nothing compared to what Jesus has to offer. You say, well, you know, I know people that have, that have followed Christ their whole lives and, and they have nothing to show for it. They're just dirt poor. They're richer than the people living in mansions. You, you see, we're looking at stuff. We're looking at possessions. We're looking at wealth. But we're looking at a big house or a fancy car and none of that means abundance. I mean, I would rather have one day with the Lord and His blessings than to have a lifetime of the world's blessings. Because the Lord's blessings pay off abundantly. And we understand that. And I understand that, you know, the old saying, preaching to the choir, you know, we understand that, but sometimes we tend to lose sight of what's important. We need to focus on the shepherd. Because he gives life to the sheep. Notice verse 11. Verse 11 says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. So not only does he give us life, but he's also giving his life. He, he gives till it hurts. He gives all. To protect the sheep. To guide the sheep. To make sure that the sheep have everything that they need, the shepherd is willing to even lay down his life to give for the sheep. Think about that. You know, oftentimes we, we use the analogy of, of, of a family, you know, and, and I think about my family. You know, what would happen if someone came and threatened your home and threatened your family? Well, I guarantee you the first person out that door to stop them is going to be me. Why? Because that's my family. And you're not going to hurt my family. I mean, my wife knows there have been several times that people have upset her and it's either get to Paul and calm him down before he gets to them <laughs> or something bad's about to happen because you don't mess with my family. It's just the way it is. But this is Jesus. And he's saying, these are my sheep. And I will lay down my life for my sheep. 
What an amazing truth. We, we look at Calvary sometimes as, yeah, that's a cute little story. <laughs> you don't understand Calvary. That's not a cute little story. That is the story, the most important story. There's no other story in history that's ever been told more important than Calvary because that was the shepherd laying down his life for the sheep. So he gives for the sheep. And we've alluded to this a little bit, and then next we see that he guards his sheep. Notice this in verse 12. He guards his sheep. But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, <laughs> notice this, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth because he is an hireling and careth not for the sheep. Now, notice what he's saying here. He's teaching us how he guards the sheep, but he starts by saying, listen, there are others that, you know, the shepherd may hire someone, again, using this analogy of the sheep and the shepherd, he's saying this shepherd could hire someone to, to watch over the sheep. He's not the shepherd. He's just someone that's been paid to stand there and make sure nothing happens. Well, when this hireling sees the danger, when he sees the wolves coming, he runs, he flees, because it's just a paycheck to him. And he's going to let the sheep be eaten up. He's going to let them be scattered. He's going to let them be chased. He's going to let them fall into trouble because he's not the true shepherd. You see this? He doesn't care about the sheep. We have a lot of religions out there that fall into this category. They don't care about the sheep. They care about their bank accounts. They care about getting that paycheck. They care about how much you put in the offering plate. And that's what's important to them. Oh, we've got to uh, build a big, beautiful building and we've got to, we've got to face... You know, uh... but buildings are not bad. But when that's the focus, building, paying, you know, getting more money, you know, I'm, I'm going to take my jacket off. I'm going to slay a few of you. You know, you're going to be healed. <laughs> Give me money. Send me money. And they get on television. Hey, I'll pray for you if you send me money. Those are not shepherds. They don't care about the flock. You know, <laughs> they, they, they care about their God, their green God, the almighty dollar. And it's just amazing that Jesus makes this analogy here because he says, you know, these hirelings, they don't care anything for the sheep. They just care about their payday. Look at verse uh, 14. I am the good shepherd. How many times has he said this now? He said, I'm the door, I'm the shepherd. He, he, he's, he's driving this home. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and I am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. So he says it again. I'm willing to do anything it takes to protect my sheep, even if I have to lay down my life to do so. In fact, he doesn't say if. He says, I lay down my life for the sheep. That's a definite. I'm going to die to protect my sheep. To give my sheep what they need to survive, I'm going to give my life. I know my sheep, and they know me. Isn't that interesting that he should say that? He's made this statement a couple of times in this passage, but we need to understand that if we are not in the Word of God regularly, it's real easy to hear another shepherd and go, yeah, that sounds right. Because, you know, people that, that teach false doctrine, they know enough about truth to make it sound good. They mix their false doctrine with true doctrine, and when we hear it, we go, yeah, I think I've heard that in the Bible somewhere. Have you ever heard this, this saying? And I've heard this all my life growing up, and I always believed it to be true until I got in the Bible. People used to say all the time when I was growing up, God helps those. You all know it too. God helps those who help themselves. Listen to me. Listen to me. I'm going to tell you why that's a false statement. If I can help myself, I don't need God. It's not in the Bible. 
is not scriptural. And if, you've, and if you don't know that, then it's real easy to fall for that and follow that false shepherd. See what he's saying here? My sheep know me. I know them. They hear my voice. They know my voice because they've been in my word. They know my commands above any other command. You understand that these sheep, they don't just know what the shepherd says. They know his voice. His voice is distinctive. His voice is unique. And they may hear the same commands from another shepherd, but it's not their shepherd's voice. You see what he's saying here? They know me, I know them. My father knows them. My sheep are so unique that even my father knows that they belong to me. This is an amazing truth. And when we grasp this truth, it will really change how we see Jesus Christ. Look at verse 16. Verse 16, he says, And other sheep I have which are not of this fold. You all know that South Haven Baptist Church are not the only believers in the world, right? There are other folds out there. And this, this, the same shepherd leads those folds as well. We need to be mindful of that. We're not the only game in town. He says, Other sheep have I which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice. And there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Eventually, he's giving a future statement here. Eventually, we're all going to be together and I'm going to lead you all. Therefore, doth my father love me because I lay down my life that I might take it up again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down myself. I have power to lay it down. I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my father. He's saying, listen, I will sacrifice for my sheep. That's my job. My job is to guard them at all costs. And I have to give my life to do that. My father knows this because he gave me the command. And what's he teaching them here? I'm about to go to Jerusalem and I'm going to be put to death. But don't fear because I, it's not, they're not killing me. They're not murdering me. You ever hear, seen those books, those that murdered Jesus? You know, Jesus didn't get murdered. That's what he says here. I have power to lay down my life. I do it willingly. But I also have power to take it up again because this is my Father's command. This is God's design. God has designed it for me to go to Jerusalem, be put to death, to be raised on the third day so that you could have power over death through me. This is what he's teaching them. And it's amazing that he's preparing them so much for what they're about to face so that when it happens, they're not shocked and dismayed. But they were, weren't they? Because they still don't get it. So as he's teaching this, we get in this passage the response from the Jews that are nearby. Verse 19. There was a division, therefore, again among the Jews for these sayings. It's like they understood what he was saying to some extent. Because they know prophecy, they know scripture. And these things are sounding familiar. So they're getting excited, they're getting angry, they're getting worked up. In verse 20, And many of them said, He hath a devil and is mad. Why hear ye him? Others said, These are not the words of him that hath a devil. Can a devil open the eyes of the blind? And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication, and it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. So, first of all, this, this uh, feast that they're referring to, this was actually a, a time that they would gra gather together and they would commemorate the rebuilding of the temple. And so what they would do is every night they would light lights and light, they would light up the whole city. And every night more lights would be added. I mean, you could see these lights shining for miles because of this celebration of the temple and this celebration of what God has done for Israel and this celebration that God is now back and we have our temple and we can worship and in the midst of this celebration, Jesus is teaching. See? I'm the one you should follow. I'm the shepherd. I'm the door. This ceremonial stuff means nothing without me. You see this? And boy, they don't like it. 
And, and, and so they, they begin this feast and they begin celebrating and Jesus comes along and He's teaching things that, that make them so angry. It's like, I'm the one that guards them. I'm the one that leads them. I'm the door. So finally, He says, on the heels of their revolt or rebuke, if you will, he says that he is a guarantee for the sheep. Notice this. Verse 24. We've got to move quick. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. So now they're saying, All right, tell us. Are you the Christ? Are you the Messiah? Hasn't he already told them that? Well, notice verse 25. Jesus answered them, I told you. Na, 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 I told you so. <laughs> That's not what he said. I told you and ye believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. You don't believe who I am because you don't belong to me. Isn't that the way it is? People don't believe that Jesus is the only way to heaven. It couldn't really be that simple. They think that way because they don't belong to Him. They've never put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. They'll believe anything that comes along. They'll, they'll believe every wind of doctrine because they're not following the true shepherd. And He's saying, listen, I told you. How many times in this passage did He say, I'm the door? How many times in this passage did He say, I'm the shepherd? How many times did he point out to them that he has to lay down his life for the sheep? They all would have understood this and they said, are you really him? Just tell us plainly. He says, I've already told you and you didn't believe me. I'm the guarantee. You see what he's saying here? I'm the one you need to look to. I'm the one that you need to focus on. I'm the one that's going to lead you to God. Only me. Look at verse 27. Verse 27, he says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. I mean, you couldn't put it more plainly. Jesus says, I'm the way in, I'm the door, I'm the shepherd, I'm the one you follow, I'm the one you hear. And my sheep know that. My sheep know my voice, they follow me, but you're not my sheep. That's why you don't believe. He says, my sheep gain eternal life. Now what's he saying here? I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You cannot have eternal life any other way. Aren't you thankful that he did not say, my sheep have life until they mess up again? Because we all mess up, don't we? Aren't you glad he didn't say, my sheep have eternal life because they live a good life, because they're good people? The Bible says there's none good, no, not one. Aren't you glad he didn't say, you know, my sheep have life because they join this church or that church? No, I'm the way. I'm the giver of eternal life. I'm the shepherd. I'm the door. There's no other way to obtain eternal life but through me. Nothing else matters. Follow the shepherd. What an amazing teaching. What an amazing truth. And even the disciples, I think, they're probably still sitting there scratching their heads, you know, when Jesus says, I and my Father, we're one. And the Jews, they rise up in revolt, and they are ready to kick Him out of the city, but this had to happen. He had to set this stage. He knew they were going to be upset. He knew they were going to try to kill Him. He knew they wanted to get rid of Him. And again, He knew that He had to do this in this fashion because... It was all prophesied by his father. It was all commanded by God. This is how it has to happen. You're going to go into Jerusalem. They're going to love you. They're going to praise you. Then they're going to kill you. Okay, Lord, send me. You know, it's what he's saying. I'm the way. I'm the shepherd. Follow me. 
Jesus is that good shepherd. He guides the sheep. He guides them where they need to go. He guides them to the best places. He guides them to the places where they can get everything that they need. He gives for the sheep. He gives everything for the sheep, even his life. He gives eternal life through his life. And when we trust that shepherd, we obtain that life forever. Not till we mess up, not till we sin again, but life eternal. It can't be lost because it's bound in him, not in us. It's not dependent upon anything that we do because he's already done the work. He guards the sheep. When the enemies come, he doesn't run like some hireling. He stands and is willing to give his life if that's the cost for his sheep. And he guarantees the sheep. He is the payment. He is the proof. He is what God requires for the sheep to enter the fold. Nothing else. He is the good shepherd. What an amazing truth. And again, we know because we know his word that the disciples just don't get it. But we should. There should be no question in our minds. When Jesus leads us in a direction that is consistent with his word and consistent with his ideology, consistent with his ministry, then we just need to follow. Because he's the shepherd. And we need to go wherever he tells us to go. If he steps left, we go left. If he steps right, we go right. If he says stop, we stop. Because he is the shepherd. The only one. Amen? Father, we thank you today for this time and thank you for these lessons that we can see in your word. And Lord, just help us to better understand the life and the ministry of Jesus through these lessons and help us to apply these truths to our walk with you each and every day. We pray for the services to follow and be with Pastor. Bring the message this morning. May it be exactly what we need for our lives. In Christ's precious name we pray. Amen.